It's so grateful and I am so happy to be with you here today on this Sunday morning. And I have to say to you that since I was asked to say this Mass, it's not only that I didn't sleep, but I changed my homily about five times. And yesterday night, I came up with the idea that all of those scripture readings, they do fulfill one another. In the first reading, we heard in the middle of the reading, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. God himself is reminding us today that when we celebrate this holy day, Sunday, we should be happy, joyful, and remind one another that God is love, and he brings and shares us loves with one another. And later we heard in the second reading, in the whole entire reading, about many parts and one body. I do remember when I was a small boy at my home back in Poland, at some point my father said to my mother, well, you're cooking from Monday to Friday, Let's me do cooking on Sunday. When we heard that, we're a little bit terrified that we are not going to have too much to eat. <laughs> and that was the case on the first Sunday that we ended to order pizza. <laughs> but my father said, all of us, we need to work as one body. And this is what I am sharing with you. All of us over there, we have assigned jobs. My brother and I, we help to do something with preparation for that lunch or dinner. My father's job after mass, on his way back from church, he will stop at the local shop to buy it either fresh meat or something that he is going to prepare for lunch. My mother's job was basically to wait to be served and later offer the prayer when we ate together. And when I thought about the second reading and I said, this is a perfect story to share with you that on that Sunday, we not only recognize and worship God in love and peace, but we were brought together as a family. Over that table, we shared the meal, but most of all, we shared the stories from the whole entire week, our good and bad stories, because sometimes I remember hearing that something happened which was not a good exactly case, but my parents shared with us. After we finished eating, of course, we did dishes, and we helped with all of that. And my father's job was to lay down on the couch and watch his favorite movie, and my mother's to read the book. My brother and I, I believe it was a lot of homework assigned to us. We went back and finished our homework, or we just got together with our friends and play different kind of games outside. One body and many parts. Those watching us here today, they may relate to that different way. You can say it, well, I have surgery, or maybe I was injured, or maybe I experienced COVID-19 symptoms or COVID-19 itself, and I am a little bit weak and my whole entire body can feel it. But it's something deeper to that. And on the end of this, we heard it, to be first apostles, second prophets, first teachers, then gifts of healing, assistance, and administration. God gave different gifts to different people, to men and women, to include everyone in our society to work together. And that's probably is the challenge to us in our church now. We need to recognize one another with different talents, those leaders, deacons, sisters, priests, those they receive the gift of teaching and patience to teach, those they have better connection maybe that we do with God because they can stay in church and pray longer. But on the end, we have to serve one another. And think about that as I shared with you the story from my home, we came together. Everything was together in one picture. How we do that in our society now? Are we supporting one another? Are we doing what we're supposed to do? Maybe you have a talent which another person doesn't. How do you use that talent to promote peace and help those 
they can do what you do. It is challenging, but it's possible that at some point we're going to become one body in Christ Jesus our Lord. But it's our call. Jesus is calling us and giving us different examples, different stories, but we need to answer that call. We cannot be stubborn and say, well, I just do this and I don't care for others. We have to come together in our community, in our church, to support one another in peace, love, forgiveness, and understanding, to become one body in Christ. Gospel passage on the end said it to us, to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Those people might be those people around us. Maybe someone is blind, not physically, but doesn't recognize that we are next to them. Maybe we have some oppressed people because they think that they just do their own things and they cannot do anything else. Poor people, not only on the streets, but those we pass by them and they are acting as a poor people in our eyes. To bring all parts together in one body, in Jesus, I think we need to recognize those people in our neighborhoods, in our families, and among ourselves. That when Jesus will ask each one of us that question, how did you fulfill your mission? How did you use your talent to help others, your family members and friends? That when we're asked that question, we can say to him, we provided to the poor, we provided to the captives, we gave sight to the blind, and we helped those oppressed to feel and go free because you are my master and through you, Jesus, my savior, I can share the love which I received from you from the beginning of my creation. My wish to all of us this weekend is that we'll think and reflect on those words to become one body from many parts involved in our societies and the things we do together to recognize one another and be thankful to God that we have one another. Amen.